there are many negative influences that can affect young people. It's important to shield our youth from these influences and guide them towards building a better future. That's why the Universal Church organizes the Born for the Altar Conference. During the first day of the conference, the young participants had a wonderful experience singing alongside the Universal Gospel Choir. They also received powerful prayers for help and guidance in different aspects of their lives. You want to take this person back to prison? You want this person back in jail? I rebuke you, the spirit of the devil. Additionally, there were prayers offered for the executive branch of the government, symbolized by NYPD officers. We are going to pray for God to protect them. Amen. Please stretch out your hands here. Let us pray for the officers. O oh God of the Bible, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray for the officers from every precinct here in New York City and all over the country. Bishop Joshua emphasized the importance of their role in serving the community. The most important part of the day was when they heard a powerful message about how the world can be deceptive. If anyone loves this world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the love of the Father hey, is not feelings. The love of the Father is not about the love, as they say, the love of the heart. The love of the Father is this. This is the love. He gave his life, which means we have to value his sacrifice. Surrender your life to Jesus. I'm not talking about church, religion. You came here to live different. Surrender your life to the Lord. Afterward, they listened to real life stories from inmates who had been drawn into traps by the fascination of the world. I was brought up in the church. I went to Sunday school. I went to vacation Bible school. I sung in the choir and I was on the usher board with my grandmother. She won't be released until the year of 2056. By that time, she will be 70 years old. I was sleeping with two men at one time, and to make a long story short, one kidnapped the other one, and he ended up killing him. And since I was there, I got the same time as him. I got 99 ads. Her sentence is incredibly long, 99 years in prison. So she won't be released until she's 121 years old in the year of 2098. My oldest daughter killed herself. How old was she? 18. 18. Do you know what was, uh, what were her reasons? Her dad was in prison. Her mom was gone. Uh, her grandmother had just passed away, the one that was raising her. Uh, depression. My youngest daughter died of COVID and my son died with my wife in a car wreck. Unless he gets parole, he won't be free until the year of 2047 when his 35-year sentence is over. The message had a profound impact on some of the young attendees, to the point that seven of them chose to change their lives and commit to Jesus through water baptism on the same night. What stood out to me in the message was when Bishop said, do not love the world. I feel great. I feel one with God. The young people continued by engaging in worship and seeking the guidance and presence of the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Be revived. He revives your soul. Be filled. 
do with the Lord. He revives you right now. Receive in this video the visit of the Holy Spirit. He visits you. On the second day of the conference, after a bit of rest following the night vigil, the young participants gathered at a recreational center in Brooklyn, New York. Here, they took part in a national basketball championship. Despite having spent most of the previous night awake, they still had plenty of energy to enthusiastically support their team. Screaming at the top of my lungs, I think I'm losing my voice. We're actually experiencing the bone for the altar for the first time. I experienced God in like a new light, you know, seeing new things and stuff. So I'm glad that I was able to make it. During the event at the recreational center, Bishop Joshua took a moment to address the participants once again. He shared the inspiring story of Amaral, who began attending church services while in prison and is now actively involved in the church's youth program. Yeah, I went to Julie TYC and then I went to prison. Now, like, I just, any wrong decision that I see people, like my old friends, like they try to hit me up. Like, I don't even just, I don't condone it to them. I block everybody, like, I don't talk to nobody but the positive people. Every time I hear somebody die, like I really think like, did they soul really go to heaven or hell? All y'all in here, youngs, old, middle age, you know what I'm saying? I want all y'all to stay focused. Keep keep going, like keep pushing, like don't ever stop. Like it's, it's greater out here in this world. Just I want everybody to win, nobody to lose, real talk. I started going out, going to bars, clubs, and like just drinking. Just keep drinking and drinking and drinking to the point where I blacked out. I got into a fight with somebody. I ended up going to the hospital. I ended up getting four stitches. Well, four or five stitches on my head. I was covered in my own blood. Um, I got an aggravated battery with a weapon. I did a four year sentence in prison. I was one of those people behind the doors. I was somebody who was in max custody, where I spent 23 hours in a cell for months by myself. I was those people who couldn't go anywhere without being handcuffed, without being shackled. I was walking down the street one day, walking to the mother of my baby, my mother of my child's house, and the, uh, a YPG member approached me she said, hey, come to YPG. And I came, I came, and I never, I never turned back. I go to church every single day now. Every single day I'm at church. Even when we don't have service, because service is at seven o'clock, I'm there at two o'clock, at 12 o'clock. If I don't have work, I wake up and go straight to church. I love it, I love it. I'm no longer depressed. Yes, I still fight with my emotions, because I'm not perfect. I still fight with my emotions but I don't let it get the best of me no more. I do not dwell in my emotions. I no longer have that dread inside of me. I no longer have that depression inside of me. I no longer feel the need to drink to think I'm happy. Cause that's all it was. I thought that I was happy drinking, but in reality, I was just causing more harm to myself. On the third and final day, the young participants took part in a spiritual graduation ceremony where they received invaluable guidance. The message focused on reflection and encouraged the youth to be more mindful of the friends they choose to associate with. What Satan does, he brings somebody inside of the church that seems to be a Christian, a good guy, a good girl, and deceives you. He is a messenger or oh, she is a messenger of the devil. They bring their messages. Now the Lord said that the man's enemies, the man's enemies are of his household. 
Hi, my name is Marsha and I'm from Georgia. And this is my first time attending BFA and it was amazing. Friday was very strong, especially after watching the um, prison, I want to say the prison testimonies. Seeing that, especially the lady who had 99 years, she had nothing on her record, and she just did one bad thing, and then now her whole life is gone and thrown away. And that really impacted me because I was doing similar things as her. So seeing that, how her life turned out and how life my life could have been, it really did hit home. And you will see me at the next VFA, best believe. Like, a lot of people, like, around me um, cursed, so naturally, um, I thought it was like a normal thing to start cursing. And so um, I started slowly getting into that habit. What I learned from the experience was that when I cursed, I brought demons into my life. Hi, my name is Rose. I'm from Hawaii. And um, this is my first time to the BFA in New York. It's a really good experience. I come from a very broken family. So being able to hear pastor um, talk about how family can, there's always one person who can move the whole entire family and help them change. I feel like I'm that person. And so I can't wait to go back home and tell my whole family how a great experience this was. Born for the Altar Conference, inspiring and empowering a new generation of young visionaries.